Hello everybody and welcome back in to our domination tutorial for Civilization 6. We are doing turns 101 to turns 151 in this episode. That's right, I went over by one turn and forgot to stop recording. Whoops, my bad. Anyways, turns 100 to 151 here are going to be about taking our small but powerful army and moving it around the map like a goon squad. I was shocked at how much we got accomplished in this next 50 turns when I played the game. I'm sure you're going to be very entertained by how much we got accomplished during the next 50 turns when you watch the game. If you enjoy this content, let me know if you have any questions or concerns down in the description below. As you know, I will not be able to get to every little bit and piece of information you're going to need for a domination game, but I hope after you watch these three videos, that you'll feel comfortable kind of going on your own with Rome and giving it a try. Feel free to check out the live stream, twitch.tv slash Van Bradley. We stream there a few times a week. Uh, it's a great place to hang out. We have a, a great time over there. Also, hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already so you don't miss any more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching, and let's get into the domination. We are going to settle Patioli over here. Uh, another good campus is really, really nice for us. Obviously good commercial hubs in the area as well. Uh, their, try their strategy is flawed trying to take Ravenna here. And the, the city states are still kind of murdering in the middle a little bit. It seems like we might have to go through Muscat and actually take Muscat if we hope to come over and take on um, Hungary over here. But he declared war on us and he's just moving his units up to, to kind of get um, first taken out by Laventa here in this little war. And then if they even make it to us, they're not doing a lot of damage to the city, which is awesome. I got reinforcements coming around the back. I have an archer coming around here as well. I should be able to hold these guys off. And we should, we should be in a decent position here. One of your first opportunities to open up a huge science lead on the AI will be Natural Philosophy, getting 100% campus district adjacency bonuses. Once we put that card in, that added th an extra three science to us. But we have a campus going down here, a campus going down here. We have a really good campus coming in hot here. And having those adjacency bonuses doubled really helps put us a little bit uh, ahead of the AI. You can even see Matthias has 43 science per turn and we have 37. So in terms of science level, we're roughly equal. So we need to really focus on trying to take a lead here. So when we march down with crossbows and legions, um, he doesn't have a higher level military than us. There is a few fun options with our governor here. We could get Amani and put Amani in either Rapa Nui or Granada um, to either make sure we keep the Sioux here or take the Sioux of Rapa Nui. That might be something we want to consider. Also, Victor is quite good in a domination game because you can hop Victor between all the cities you're going to take to help with loyalty pressure and we'll show you that when we get there and we will definitely be hopping Victor around. Magnus is also a good shout right now because the chops are just always good. I think on the whole we're probably good without Victor at the moment. I think on the whole we're probably good without Victor. We still have a long way to go before we can actually take these guys out I feel. So I think we'll probably go Magnus. There are a few decent chops in Patoli down here and Ravenna over here that we might want to get in before this game uh, really gets going. Grab Magnus, put him in Ravenna for now. Patoli doesn't have a lot of loyalty, but that should be fine. Ravenna is good for now. We're about to get supercharged builders with the pyramids and with those builders, um, we can use uh, the four builder charges to get all these chops. From the height of these pyramids. pyramids. <laughs> Pyramids are one of the best wonders in the game. In any game you can get the pyramids, you should get the pyramids. Getting four build charges on every builder you build instead of three is dozens of extra build charges in a game. It's it's so powerful. It looks like they have backed off of Ravenna just as I assumed they would. They are a bit outnumbered here and they're having trouble kind of figuring out this mess in the middle. I mean, yeah, any unit that makes it through here, we're just straight up taken out. These roads are so helpful for that, too, to have units that can just kind of run through between our cities and kind of make a block here. It's very, very helpful to have these legions. We're, we're gunning down his units pretty good here. If we had more crossbows, I'm still waiting for um, enough gold to upgrade these at half price, which we should be able to get fairly quickly here. Um, once we have crossbowmen, we should be able... I think we're going to have to go through Muscat, though, so I think we'll focus on taking Muscat next. I'm going to go towards universities before I head towards Niter. Um, once we discover the Niter, it's still a bit before the Niter units anyway. And if I can get a little more science from the universities, going through here will be quicker because of that. 
We are going to go for Warlord's Throne as our next government plaza upgrade. We're not really setting, settling any more cities, so Ancestral Hall is off the table. And Warlord's Throne will help us with production every time we take a city, which we'll probably take lots of for the rest of this game. <laughs> I love how good these legions are, just mowing down archers. That's so funny. Um, I'm going to take the double hit next turn, one, two, and then I'll get a promotion. Um, I know we have a promotion here, and we'll use the promotion to heal up. I love legions, man. I forget how fun legions are to use. Probably head down towards monarchy next. That'll be a good second government for us to start with. Lots going on in Chennai. I feel pretty good about an encampment on a road. Something about having an encampment right on a road so any unit that spawns can just run down to the fight is very, very helpful for us. All right, we are going to get the Suze of Rapa Nui. Actually, we're over on era score by a lot. 10 turns left. I don't really want to Suze Rapa Nui and get the era score then. What's Rapa Nui's bonus? Oh, Moai improvements are good, but we already have Alcazar improvements. I'm not going to Suze Rapa Nui now. I don't want the era score. I am actually might, might take Muscat. No, I want to take Muscat out. I'm going to go one into Hong Kong, I guess. And then we'll leave this other envoy for now. We are going to upgrade the Legion here to have plus one movement. And it can scale cliff walls, which is awesome. Um, but mostly these Legions are going to come down and just race down the roads and take out these archers. We're also going to get our first crossbowman here. 125 gold because we have the professional army card in. So a crossbowman will be very helpful in kind of picking off anyone who gets near Ravenna. We can also upgrade this bad boy to a legion for 75 gold, which we are definitely going to do. And that helps shore up our military a little bit. We're trying to have a small military that has a bunch of promotions is our, is our end goal here. This campus is complete now, so we can use our great scientist that gives a library in this district and gives all libraries plus one science. Very nice. Very happy with that. And a great general. So our great general is going to be really good here. This is our first one. There are two parts to great generals you should know about. The first is um, that if you put great generals adjacent to units, they will give you extra combat strength. But you have to make sure you know which era units. This is classical and medieval. Right where we are right now, that is perfect for us. So what you want to do, um, let's say you have warriors, right? Warriors are ancient era units. So this great general will not give them the extra plus five combat strength and plus one movement. So classical and medieval, let's take a look at our crossbowmen here. Crossbowmen are medieval, that is awesome for us. Legions are classical. So all of our units that we have right now will be affected by this great general, so we definitely would like to recruit that. The next is, once you kind of age out of your great general and it's no longer helpful because your units are too advanced, um, you want to look at what the next ability is. This one creates a great work um, for the art of war, which is awesome for us. So I think this is a great, great general for us to grab. And we want to zoom it down to be next to all these units so they all get extra combat strength. Yeah, I'm just going to take out archers with the legions. I have nowhere for this great rider to go right now. You can always check your great work slots. They are all full. So we will just sleep this guy right here. He's just going to take a nap on the honey. Don't get stung, mate. But he's going to take a nap until we need him. The archer destruction squad is here. And they're just... <laughs> just mowing them down, baby. Just mowing them down. Oh, this is... There's a lot of archers to kill, but they're just mowing them down. This crossbow here is just going to provide cover fire, which is going to be great. I reckon if we get one more legion down here, oh, right here, there's another one coming right here. We should be able to take Muscat pretty easily. In a city with an Oracle and Pingala with the Grants promotion, you really want to focus on districts to maximize your great person points. We have great science points coming in here, great writer points coming in here. So I think the next step for us is probably a commercial hub, although I wouldn't mind a harbor. It's a long way for the boats to go, but they do have a path through here. It's probably going to be a commercial hub for the great merchant points. I don't really want that. Plus one, plus two. It's a plus two harbor. You know what? Let's go for the plus two harbor. Um, it equals about the same for an adjacency. We'll get the lighthouse for the trite route, and great admiral points might be more helpful for us this game than not, because we are going to have to cross to the other continent as well. You have to at least feel a little bit bad for these archers that are just getting absolutely ruined. We don't even have the Great General down here yet. Next turn, all of these guys are getting an adjacency for the Great General. This is... This is destructive. <laughs> I love domination games. 
We want to be a little bit even. We've built a lot of campuses. So next up here will be a theater square so our culture doesn't fall too far behind our science. I'm going to put this ra or envoy in Rapa Nui. I know getting the error score is not helpful and the error score from the Giants Causeway is not very helpful either. Um, but it is good to be able to get our boat through so we can explore. Where is the Giants Causeway? Giants Causeway. Land combat units that enter adjacent plots receive the Spear of Fion plus five combat strength. So it's always good to put an encampment next. What was that called again? How did I mess this up? Giant's Causeway. Uh, it's good to put an encampment next to Giant's Causeway because then they automatically get the plus five. Ah, they're over here. This boat is what? Interesting. So we have a whole little island here that hasn't been settled yet. So we might want to settle a few cities here just to take over this area of the map. So we have set up our units in a formation here that allows us to siege the capital. If you can, you want your units to surround all sides of the, not the capital, but all sides of the city you're attacking. It's not always possible, but if you can, it's really nice. There aren't any walls here. We have moved our great general here, so it's going to give the extra combat strength to this legion, this legion who's adjacent to it, and this crossbowman behind it. This guy right here, though, because he's not next to the great general, will not get the extra combat strength. If you ever want to check, you can just click a unit, hover over your attack, and in the bottom right, it'll say legion, uh, minus four because it's a damaged unit, plus five from the great general, plus four from oligarchy. So it'll tell you all the boosts we're getting. And now we can begin our attack. Oh, yeah, Muscat's gonna melt fairly quickly. I don't think this is gonna be a, a good day for Muscat, unfortunately. Ooh, Muscat's ours next turn, baby. We are going to grab our chops while we can with Magnus in this city. We're gonna grab a four-turn trader here. No point in having trade routes if we are not going to use them. We have three right now. It's important that we are trading and making the most out of that. Lots of barbs on this island as well. I still might want to settle this. In another world, though, we can just let somebody else settle this and take their cities. So that's an option. We will upgrade this to a crossbow, let it heal up, and then it can join the fray as well. But you can see we're doing like a small military that's well managed, can do a lot of damage. For our ranged units promotion, we have a crossbow here. We are going to go volley arrow storm. Zone of control is very, very, very nice. It makes it so enemy units can't really move that well um, when they come adjacent to your unit. So zone of control is awesome. And then expert marksman is the, is the place you want to be. Getting two attacks per turn instead of one is incredibly powerful. So we want to head down the left side here and get to expert marksman. I'm going to take the city with the most damaged unit so it's in the city center and nice and safe from an attack. And there's Muscat, and it comes with a free commercial up. How about that? When you take cities, you're just going to repair whatever needs repairing. Um, I'm going to go Monument first, then Granary, and then we'll focus on what we want to do next. I am going to send this trader to Yasso Dara Pura. Right now, I think the eight gold and the one faith is really, really nice for us. Granada is safer at seven gold. No, Granada's not safer at all because uh, Hungary can intercept this. I'm a little worried about barbarian boats, but I'll take the chance. I'll take the risk and send it down here for now. We don't have any more units to upgrade with Professional Army. I'd love to get one or two more crossbows in the game here, so we'll probably put Feudal Contract in in order to build those a little bit quickly. And then we will have um, just a few more crossbows to, to work with our legions here, and then we should be good to go down and just take whatever we want in Hungary. It looks like we're going to have to head to Estergom and move our way up this way because of the mountain range here. This is not the best great merchant, so I am just going to pass on this guy. Not something we need right now. Do not be afraid to pass on great people that you do not think are helpful to you. I have some duplicates of tobacco and marble here. He already has marble, but maybe he will buy my duplicate tobacco. He will not... Either way, it's a good practice to start trying to sell your duplicate resources. That's really not a good deal. Is no one going to give me a good deal here? Well, it's better than no deal, and I got no one else to trade with right now. There's still two people to discover that'll be on the other continent. I am going to send this scout um, as far as he can go in the ocean. He can't go into deep water yet, but I am going to try and find the other continent just so I can see who else is in the game here. I'm going to send my crossbowman down to do a little scouting mission. I can see that he has discovered walls and is building them in his cities. We also have a wonder here that's under construction, the statue of Zeus. So I know he's not building walls here because he seems to be building this. So I might try and blitz Buddha really fast while he doesn't have walls and has a lower military strength. 
This river has flooded a few times now, giving us some really good tiles that aren't even anywhere near our districts, which is awesome, because if they're not flooding the districts and they're only flooding these tiles, that, that gives us more food, more production. Even if we built a farm triangle over here, that would be very, very helpful for growth in this city without affecting our districts. So I really like how this is starting to shape up here and, and settle in. I'm going to send this trader out to Delhi in an effort to make them a little bit happier with us. I'd love to be friends with him as he's got like two elephants over here. I'm not worried about the elephants, but if he like surprise wars and then comes to Chennai, then I'll have to defend from them. And that brings units away from the fight I'm trying to have down here. I'm going to grab a crossbow. It'll take six turns to build. That was the whole point of putting the policy card in, feudal contract. So we might as well honor that. Now that we have everything repaired in a muscat, we can kind of pick a way to go here. What I see here is a tile that is useless. There's no yields on it, and it's next to a market and the city. So this will be a plus one district. And I think this is probably a good place to throw down a theater square. Right? Theater square adjacencies are hard to find. A plus one isn't amazing, but a theater square would be nice. We also have some great writers that need homes, and so we're going to need to build some theater squares with the amphitheaters to find those people. The homes they need to write their books, you know? Now that we have universities, I feel pretty good about heading into NIDER and seeing what NIDER units we might want to build. If he has uh, started building walls everywhere, bombards are going to be our next best bet to take down the walls. There are other ways of doing it. I like bombards. I think they're fine. I don't like catapults, um, but we'll, if he builds walls in Buddha, we'll work that out when we can. Yeah, it's also worth noting that this attack is also potentially possible because I know we're going into a Golden Age in four turn and we'll have maximum loyalty pressure. So we just have to hope that he's not also going Going into a golden age this great scientist allows wounded land units to heal plus five hp per turn that's really really good in a domination game its passive effect is really good too plus 20 hp healing from players units within one tile i'm just going to use this effect to get the uh extra healing right now i'm not going to bring it all the way down um, but it is good to know we have enough trade routes i'm going to grab the university before the lighthouse to boost our science numbers a little bit as you can see we're still a little bit behind matthias we have unlocked Monarchy. Um, I'm going to save going into Monarchy until the next era. I'm going to get the era score next era. We're already 40 era score over, which is very, very bad. And then also Oligarchy right now is giving us extra combat strength. So I'd rather switch out of that after we're finished up with Buddha, because I'm probably not putting the Oligarchic Legacy card in right away, which would give us that combat strength back. While we're waiting, it's also probably worth pillaging the campus for a little bit of science, getting us uh, towards Niter just a little bit quicker, and allowing us to deny them a little bit of science per turn as well, because they are technically ahead of us. Now that we've discovered Niter, the next thing you want to do is go and search for Niter in the search bar and see where Niter on the map is. We have Niter in Muscat, which is amazing. We're going to have to build a mine there. We have Niter 1, 2, 3 right outside of either Patioli or Ravenna. This tile is within range of both cities. Otherwise, it looks like we don't have Niter in our empire, which is totally fine for us. Two Niter nodes is, is a good start. I'm actually going to buy a builder here to get that Niter going. We're going to need to get rid of the farm, put a mine down, and then I can send that builder over here um, to help chop some of this out. I'm also going to move Magnus down there. We definitely want to move Magnus down to Petroli here so we can get some of those chops in. We're going to have to move... We're going to have to get Victor, I think and move Victor down here. If we do take Buddha, our only hope is going to be to have a governor in there for loyalty. So I think now is a good time to take Victor, put it in Muscat, just so it's nearby, and then maybe throw it into Buddha once we take it, if we do take Buddha. I'm not in a rush to take it. Now that we know we are going to have Niter, we know Niter exists, we know we're gonna be able to collect it. Now going up towards muskets and bombards is a good idea. If you get here and you do not have Niter, you might wanna pick a different path to get maybe pikemen, maybe knights or whatever it is, units that you can actually use because if you go to musketmen and bombards but don't have any Niter, it's a pretty pointless affair. Moment of truth, are we also, are they also in a golden age? Ah, they are. Damn it, I was hoping so desperately they'd be in a uh, either a regular age or a dark age. Alright, so keeping the city is going to be a lot harder now. Oh boy. So our two choices here are monumentality, which is nice because then we could buy settlers and builders with our faith. Our faith per turn isn't quite high enough to make that worth it. I also think free inquiry is good here. Uh, I think commercial hubs and harbor districts gold giving us science is probably where we want to head. This really sucks that they're also in a golden age. That feels really bad. I have no I have no words for how bad that feels. 
We're going to remove the farm here to put down the Niter Mine next turn. Probably grab the uni. Probably grab the university. Not building any more units this minute. I am going to get conscription to reduce the unit maintenance. Is everything else looking good here? I think everything else is the plus one production is not great still. I don't see a I don't see a huge reason to get rid of it though. I think we're fine. When you have this much faith and nothing to spend on, it's good to check in on your great people every once in a while. I don't really need this great admiral. Nothing else here is looking nice. This great general that forms a core out of a land unit feels really good. It looks like we're not really going to be able to get there. It looks like Hungary is going to beat us, but we might be able to purchase it with faith. This is a bold place to put a horseman <laughs> in between two legions where it's probably just going to die. But hey, you know what? To each their own. You're doing good, man. I am going to vote with my one vote. I have no Diplo favor because I have occupied another person's capital and that degenerates my Diplo favor. I'm going to vote for Matthias to have extra grievances and I'll vote for us to have the extra trade route. I don't think it's really going to go through, but we'll see. Nope. Hey, Matthias does get more grievances. That's awesome. Good for us. That's a win. So many great writers without homes to write in. Where do I buy the pencils? Where do I buy enough pencils? I'm going to get a Barox here because I want more great general points. Yeah, we just got to blitz down Buddha before they can um, build walls here. Keeping Buddha is going to be the hard part, I think, though. So it looks like the blitz is going to be pretty easy. So getting Buddha is going to be easy. Keeping Buddha is going to be hard because we're not going to be able to blitz down Pesh. Because they have walls. You could also just grab a battering ram. What kind of walls do they have? Ancient walls. So you can grab a battering ram and then the legions will just go through the walls. That's an approach we might have to take. Let's get our niter pumping through the empire here. We might want to buy out to this tile. I'm not sure how desperately we need that niter. I'd like to be able to upgrade to a few musketmen pretty quickly though. Oh, are we really not going to be able to connect to the other continent? I was hoping the shallow water would kind of take us through here. We have enough commercial hubs that I think the instead of the one production getting commercial hub adjacency will be helpful for us. Oh yeah, that almost doubled our gold. In terms of governors now, I don't need Victor to do much more than he's already doing. Although Embrasure is a really good promotion for Victor. I wouldn't mind getting Amani actually. I'm going to go Victor. I'm going to go Victor into Embrasure. We'll talk about why Embrasure is good when we get there, but I, I really like this promotion. All right, so we have our units here. We're about to take Buddha. Keeping Buddha might be a whole big problem, but we're going to take Buddha to start and see what we can do. Um, you, the way you use your units is important because all of these units can attack Buddha, but only this one can plunder this trade route, right? Which seems pretty obvious. But if we if we want to attack Buddha here, we want to use the units um, that are best able to attack Buddha and leave this one free to plunder the trade route if we can. So it looks like we're going to be good to attack with these two, maybe the yeah these three legions which will definitely take out buddha so we can go here and plunder that trader and give us the extra hundred gold that we might not get if we had used this legion to attack the city and then we'll come in here and just take buddha i'm going to take it with the lowest health unit that can take the city just so it has a nice safe place to heal not that i'm really worried about it perfect <laughs> So you can see it belongs to Rome. Rebellion in 26 turns. So let's keep the city. And we do have full loyalty. We do have enough loyalty here to keep Buddha. So that's great for us. That's a really, really wonderful city. Now we're going to come in here and we are going to repair everything that needs repairing before we do anything else. I'm also going to move Victor down here just to double up on the loyalty down in Buddha. It's plus four right now. I'm going to get it up to plus eight just to be double sure. We probably want to buy a battering ram here and just go straight for Pesh. He doesn't seem to be able to defend that right well. How much is a battering ram? Or a siege tower, sorry. Medieval era support unit. When adjacent to a city attacking melee and anti-cav units, ignore walls. That's what we're hoping for with the legions. That is 400 gold. So in two turns, we can buy one of them and just ram through these walls here. You can't use the siege tower on Renaissance walls, though. So that's why we checked to make sure they had ancient walls. We also have Niter down in Buddha, which I didn't notice before. So I'm going to bring this Buddha, <laughs> this Buddha, this builder down here to collect this Niter and work on this city a little bit. One of the byproducts of capturing Buddha was this encampment here, which is going to give us a boost on the great general points. He's only earning 1.1 now because we took one of his encampments, but we're up to five per turn. And so we might be able to get this great general that we really, really want. Saladin. <laughs> 
is not gonna sell or win. It's not hard to meet you though. So no Saladins over here. Hard to attack on the water, which kind of sucks. So it looks like we're gonna need to bring an army over here. That makes me more likely to uh, to want to settle this land here. So we might want to grab a settler in Patna or Chennai or just anywhere that can build one really, just to send over to this little island. Time to buy our siege tower, which is gonna help us take down Pesh without needing catapults, because catapults are bad. We don't like catapults. This guy's super dead though. Rip, rip Jimmy. I'm so sorry, man. I don't want you to die. It's crazy how excited these guys must have been in. Like, hey, our empire's fantastic. We're in a golden age. Oh no, is that, is that the Romans? Oh, damn it. Oh no. Oh God, what's happening? Went from zero to 100 really quick for these guys. I think it's also time for us to change into monarchy. I think that's a good choice. I am going to put the oligarchic legacy card in though. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, I want the commercial hub bonus so bad. I need oligarchic le legacy just till Pesh is done. Just till Pesh is done. And then we'll put the commercial hub card back in. I just need that plus four combat strength still. Unit maintenance being reduced is great. Discount on upgrades will be great in a hot minute when we can upgrade to muskets. Let's do 30% production towards encampment districts, harbor districts, and buildings. We're building a harbor up in the capital, and we have a few encampments we are building buildings in, so that's fine. Uh, I don't need to build more units. I'm just going to keep the units we have. Small army, well-managed, high, high amount of promotions. We're doing fine there. Keeps the maintenance cost down. I wouldn't mind doubling up Niter, but we don't have that card yet. What do you even pick here? Maybe limes for now. Build some walls in cities that might need it. I'm not sure. All right, we got Warlord's Throne, which is going to be very, very helpful. We can go straight for the Intelligence Agency. I am not in a rush, although I'd love to get a spy over in Cairo just for a little bit of vision even, just to say hello. Um, I'm going to build a harbor here. Well, we have the card in to build harbors and harbor districts. This is a plus five harbor, but also we're going to want to build boats here to send in this direction because um, we're going to need to we're going to bring an army and a navy over to this area to conquer. It's good to know the capital is the first city we can take, though. That is much better for us knowing that we don't have to like go all the way inland to find the city. We can just take the city last and it'll be, just be the last move we make is to take Cairo. Kick Chandragupta out of Rapa Nui. Not yours. This is... Please don't settle this. Uh-oh. Are we getting Delhi as well just by a loyalty flip? That's unfortunate for them. This Quadream is so mean. He's blocking my path to a victory. And if I move here, I get zone of controlled. Oh, that's so sad. This guy is definitely dead. All right. So in Pesh, there's a few things we want to make sure we're doing. We want to make sure we have this great general. Ooh, this is going to be tough, actually. Because the siege tower needs to go here, so all these guys are hitting the city and not the walls. Which means the great general can't also- can the great general go there? Oh, yo! You can level- you can, um, layer a great general on top of a siege tower. That's fantastic! So, all one, two, three, four, five units are getting the great general boost. This one obviously can't attack anything, though. Right, but it's just good management here, and then the three attacking the city have the siege tower boost. Um, this is just for experience. This is going to take down the walls, which we're trying to just not... Like, can I really not attack here? Mega sad. Right, but this still gives experience, or experience for hitting the walls. And then we are just going to head through with the legions, ignoring the walls completely. Uh-oh, this is... This is a problem for Pesh. This great admiral is going to build us a quadrine, which is great. It means I do not have to focus much on, much on building a navy at all right now. I can focus on other things instead. Is there anything else we still want? Machu Picchu is really good. Is anyone else that we know building Machu Picchu? So the thing with building Machu Picchu in a domination game is that you're going to take over most of your districts. You're not actually going to build most of your districts. But there are a lot of mountains around and having good theater square adjacency and industrial zone adjacency on mountains can be kind of nice. Right? Like you can imagine right here you'd put a theater square here. Oh, you already have a theater square going down. Machu Picchu is really good. Maybe not for us this game though. Colossus is terrible. Yeah, we'll probably ignore it. Grab a lighthouse then. Now in Buddha, we're just going to keep the districts as they exist. So we'll grab a library here and then probably an armory. Just to just to boost both of them. I think that'll be fine. Uh-oh, my man's got a great prophet. Uh, he's definitely not getting to create that religion. The one thing we need to be careful of though is if, if he has a great prophet but doesn't get to create a religion and Arabia goes all out, like someone needs to stop Arabia from getting a religion. 
or not from getting a religion, but from spreading their religion. And so we have to be careful because if we're eliminating great profits and reducing the amount of religions in the game, it increases the chances that one religion is going to be able to take over uh, a lot of the map. So we have to be really careful. Get that little bit of experience, get a promotion on the crossbow. And let's rock and roll, baby. Pesh is ours. Bada bing, bada boom, bada bang. What are we getting in Pesh here? A campus and an encampment. Perfect. Two things we like. I'm gonna grab an amphitheater here so we have places to put our great writers that are kind of just hanging out doing nothing. Chandra Gupta thinks we're an embarrassment to our people. Yo, we are we are in a golden age and expanding the empire at a rapid pace, Chandra Gupta. How dare you? We have discovered gunpowder. The real use oh, this is so bad. Okay, we can get muskets now. <laughs> oh, we don't have enough niter. We're gonna upgrade to muskets after we just eliminate um, Matthias. We're just gonna get rid of Matthias. Getting fully rid of Matthias will give us a lot of era score, and we're gonna wanna be in a golden age. And since we went 40 era score over last era, we don't have a lot of opportunities left. So as units are healed up, we're just gonna come down here and put the pressure right on these guys to make sure that they, they don't even have a chance to get back in the game. Now that we have taken over every capital on our continent remember oh we haven't we haven't taken um the Khmer's capital all right either way point is still the same we are gonna have to start getting our units across the water and over to this area here we should probably settle a city over here or at least one or two right but we have to get units to come down here which is hard with this mountain in the way so they're probably gonna have to come via water and we're gonna have to get obviously our units over here to come take over this area which means we need to start thinking about going into cartography so our units can move on ocean tiles so we're gonna do that we'll go buttress into cartography so our units can start moving across the ocean tiles and we can start getting set up to take over the Khmer down here Rome doesn't have a lot left to build, doesn't have the population yet to build another district. So I think we're going to start building a little bit of a navy here. Again, I don't need a big navy. You just need a well-managed navy. I think a quadrim here is going to make sense for us. And then after that, we're going to grab a builder. As your population, uh, as your city population levels go up, that means they can work more tiles. So if you have eight population in a city, you want to make sure you have eight good tiles for them to work. There's no sense in getting a builder and building on all these tiles because then... Um, we won't have enough population to work them all, but you can see there's a lot of cities here. Down here, there's five population, but definitely not five good tiles. Over here, there's nine population and not five, or not nine good tiles. So there's a lot we're going to be able to build. It also looks like we're going to be able to flip these cities pretty easily, which is awesome for us. The scout survived. What a hero. What a legend. Absolute legend. I wonder if the people here have heard stories about the legions in Buddha and Pesh. I'm not sure they have, but they're in for a world of trouble. Make peace. Get out. I need your cities, man. I need your cities. I'm not making peace with you. I'm digging the one crossbow, one legion with a great general being able to take out this city. That's awesome. I like that for us, you know? There are still a lot of cities that need builder help to kind of get online. So I'm going to focus a builder here first before we put down another district. There's still some chops here we might want to get rid of. There's just so much in, the, in our empire we can build. And we have the population in these cities to back it up. So you want to make sure some of these tiles are getting real good if you have enough population to work them. A free builder? Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I have no idea how to pronounce this city, but it's in a whole world of trouble right now. This is just... <laughs> just straight domination of Hungary. This is bad. Estergom, I'm so sorry for what's about to happen. This guy loves his campuses and encampments, man. And we got the hanging gardens? No way. The civics tree is a little bit tricky. I want to head to enlightenment because rationalism is a really good card for us to increase the amount of science we are getting in our science buildings. It also helps if you have cities with 10 or more population, which a few cities are going to hit once we start getting all our farms and everything down. I'm going to start bringing this um, gal. Maybe not. I think cartography. Yeah, I was going to bring it back to upgrade it to a caravel. I think it's still probably worth doing. Yeah, it's going to need to be in a city that we own. So you can start heading back here. Although once we get cartography, that path will be a little bit easier. So maybe just head over here and then we'll cut across the middle. If nobody's building the great library, I am going to take a stab at it. I think the extra two great work of writing slots is really helpful. Typically, I don't find the great library that valuable, mostly because you can't get it on deity. But I think with the amount of great writers we're 
we're accumulating here. Having more great writer slots is great. The extra two science per turn is good as well, but it's not really what I'm focused on. Trading with Yasso is going to give us 13.9 gold per turn, which is a huge boost for us. That's a lot of gold for us to take advantage of. Once we have a safe fish, I think, I think honestly, like two quad reams and a caravel can probably take this city. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see once we get going here. It seems like the Khmer is pretty stuck here too without a lot of places to go. It looks like he only has two cities. He's been at 18 science and 17 culture for almost the entire game. So it leads me to believe he's kind of just stuck here and doesn't have a lot of spaces uh, to go. The Siege of Estergom will be swift and glorious. Great general giving the boost to all of these legions. Probably another reason not to upgrade them to muskets just yet is in the great general doesn't boost them. Ah, no! Is Matthias out of the game? Is Matthias out of the game? I'm so sorry. That's gonna give us five error score though. Oh, he's mad. Oh, we are the best. He's happy with us. Chandragupta is stoked. It's five error score. They will not stand the test of time. They, they did not stand the test of time. No, we shall keep Estragon. With cartography, I think the nat next natural thing is frigates here. They take niter, which we have lots of now. And I think getting our quadrums upgraded to frigates will allow us to be navally dominant in the mid game. So we'll head up to frigates and then down to banking or printing or, or bombards, kind of depending on where we want to go. <laughs> India's having a tough time up here, man. This is, not <laughs> this is not going well for them up here. Don't really have much to build in Muscat. I think Trader or Builder is the best bet here. I'm going to go Trader because we haven't really filled out our trade routes. And if you have extra trade routes that you're not filling out, you're kind of wasting your time with them. Now that we are finished warring down here, it's time to move our whole army back up to this area. Because everyone's going swimming and coming down here or over here or over here. But everyone's going for some swimming lessons. We have an amphitheater finished in Rome now or in Muscat now. So we can head a great writer down there to... I fill that with all of his great works of writing. Great merchant that increases our trade row capacity by one. Feels great. We will take it. I've decided to split up my army and send some of them back up here. I'm actually going to scout out this way and see if there's a little island in the middle here we can settle. If not, I kind of want to get a scout over here, or at least some units over here. And maybe we can start taking some of these cities early. I'm not exactly sure, but I think sending a bunch of units over here to scout is probably a good idea. We're the only ones in Rapa Nui and Granada now, so I feel pretty good about that. This um, extra boost here doesn't kick in until we have military academies, which we don't have. So we're just going to load up in Hong Kong, get the error score, and get the suzerain ship here as well. We can leave these units down here unupgraded because I'm actually going to upgrade these quadrimes into frigates in two turns and then come down here and take out whatever this city is called here. I think with two, I think honestly with two frigates and a galley... At this point in the game, we can take most coastal cities. Like Mecca, definitely. This city here, definitely. Even if we just raise this city instead of take it, it's, it's a good start. A great general that forms a core out of a military land unit is great. Also, this covers medieval and renaissance units. So with this great general, we can now use it on units we upgrade. So field cannons and bombards and muskets and those types of things. So I think this great general is going to be fantastic for us. Is field cannons... Maybe I just made that up. I think field cannons is industrial. One second. I just made that up. Don't listen to me. Field cannons is industrial. I, as soon as I said that out loud, I felt bad about that. We now have frigates and they cost 330 gold to upgrade even with half price. So it's going to be a minute uh, until both of these are frigates. We're going to have to wait till next turn. But two frigates and a galley is going to take out the city in like two turns, I reckon. We are so far ahead of the AI in science, I'm not really concerned exactly which path we take. Field cannons always feel pretty good, so we can head that way. Um, Oxford University is great. Industrialization is great as well. Um, for us, I think field cannons make sense because we have a lot of units to upgrade to field cannons. Also, we don't have a lot of industrial zones, so a lot of this stuff doesn't quite make sense. But you're going to want to get coal because coal powers a lot of the industrial and modern era naval units. Activating this great admiral will give us plus three combat strength for all naval units, and that sounds A-OK -okay to me. We can build our first spy now, and building our first spy um, leads me to that uh, tutorial I promised early about why getting Victor to Embrasure is really good. If you take a look at Victor here, well, that's the wrong screen, you idiot. 
If you go to your governors and go to Victor, Embrasure, city gains an additional range strike per turn. So if you have Victor with Embrasure in a city that has walls, those walls can attack twice per turn, which is one great reason to have it if you are in a domination game. But the other one is military units trained in this city start with a free promotion which includes spies. So we're gonna move Victor to Muscat here, where our spy is going to be built, our first spy. And that spy is gonna come with a free promotion. So we don't even need to send it out to siphon funds for its first promotion. It's just gonna get it really, it's gonna get it for free. It's a pretty niche strategy. It's not usable every game, but when you're this far ahead, this is a great way to kind of push yourself farther and snowball the lead a little bit, is having spies that come with free promotions. We have acquired Delhi. I also think this is going to flip to us, which means uh, India is fully out of the game now. <laughs> That's two people completely gone. That's so exciting. Now, remember, you don't need to keep people out of the game. You just need to take their capital cities. But this is fun to do this. You need a builder to fix a lot of this stuff. All right. We'll start with a monument, maybe. How much will a builder cost here? 21 turns is too much. We'll build it in a quicker city. A five turn builder to come up here to Delhi is much more reasonable. We are going to prepare for war down here. We are already denounced by them, so that's fine. We'll be able to declare a regular war, which is awesome. We're going to bring our two frigates down, and we're going to capture the city with our galley. If the city's on a coast, your naval melee unit just acts like a regular melee unit and can capture the city, so that is going to be fine. Over here, we have uh, we have um, discovered the other side of the island that these guys are on, and so we are going to put all our units up here and scout around a little bit, and if we feel good about our chances, probably just start taking some of these cities on this uh, continent. We have circumnavigated the globe, which is going to give us five error score. Fantastic. And they built walls here? I mean, still, two frigates are going to get rid of those walls real fast. That's annoying, though. Just slightly annoying. Ooh, Geneva's here. I mean, earning 15% science when we're not at war with anyone is probably not helpful this game because we're going to be at war with everyone the entire time. But good to know there's a science city-state here. Get a new governor title feels great. Trigger the Eureka and inspiration for a bunch of stuff also feels great. Use you here. Awesome. Let's use you here. Awesome. Exploration, siege tactics. And we have our another governor title. I think it's probably time for Imani. I think it's probably time for Imani. Let's put her in Geneva. We're good everywhere else. I kind of want to start taking over Geneva. I don't know who is uh, killing the city. Oh, we have so many great scientist points. We earned uh, two back to back. 250 science for each mountain tile. We can make that work. There's a lot of mountains on the map. These Alcazars are so good. Being the Suze of Granada has been very helpful. Like two culture and two science on a tile is ridiculously powerful. The white cliffs, cliffs of Dover, the worst wonder ever. Ah, Bermuda Triangle is probably the worst. Where was that? Okay. Oh yeah, that's a that's a drought. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, come here. We're going to war. Sorry, bud. Sorry, bud. That's, uh, our troops are not just passing by. That's an awkward drought. Where's Cliffs of Dover? Ooh, way up here. Exciting stuff. All right, over with Kamir now. Uh, these frigates should be able to melt these walls very fast. Oh. <laughs> yeah, one turn will do it. That is, um, that's exciting. We're going to wait one turn and take this city. That two frigates is good. That's all you need. I, I suspected that's all we would need. Definitely all we need. 14 turn terracotta army feels good at this point. If you put it next to this one, if you put it right here too, you can throw a theater square in between for a plus four theater square. Might as well. All right, so the Khmer had a bunch of envoys banked up and has taken uh, Laventa. So we're gonna have to defend a little bit from these units. I'm not worried about them. That is very annoying though. Teleport you down here to get your boost on this campus. Yeah, these trade routes are all going to have to go from these cities up here to probably Rapa Nui. Rapa Nui is probably the safest. Yeah, I don't want to go near Laventa. He's got a city on Chocolate Hills. I think we can just dome this guy. Oh, but I think we can just kill him. I wasn't bringing this army here expecting to kill them right away. I think we can just... I think we can just come through here and kill him. Ooh, Victor getting the double wall hit in. That was an accident, but hey, that worked out well. Yeah, all these, uh, 
All these guys gotta go to Rapa Nui now. Frigate, frigate time is my favorite. This is so destructive. I feel, I feel bad. I feel terrible. All right, do we want to keep this city? It's a good coastal city. Harbor with a lighthouse and yeah, we want to keep it. Harbor with a lighthouse is good enough for me. Awesome, we have enough loyalty. I grab walls here maybe. We can and we have the great the library. My the man. library of Alexandria, where all imagination and knowledge are assembled. We can recognize in its destruction the warning that all we gather will be lost. Great library is going to give us those two fancy pin Oh, yeah, you're mad. Uh, I'm going to declare war on Saladin. We can go get him. We can go get him. He's got a catapult. Man's got a catapult. All right, so the great library is going to give us two great works of writing slots. Although with the crossbows in the way, that seems pretty unappealing to move a great writer down there right now. Is there another city center we can take? Oh, that's so unfortunate there's not. We're going to have to come the old-fashioned way. If you refuse a city that's been loyalty flipped to you, it just goes back to being a rebellious, like, free city. So we might as well keep this, even though it's not a good city. I wouldn't normally keep this, but we might as well in this case. Granary, maybe? Oh, yeah, these guys are super dead. Oh, yeah, these guys are so freaking dead, man. This is very unfortunate. I didn't really expect this to happen. I mean, if you looked at the science numbers, someone could have said it was it was likely. But I can just literally take out these cities and raise them. Yeah, Rapa Nui is nice and safe. Hong Kong is not that safe. All right, so we're Rapa nui out here. Can you go from Patoli to Rapa Nui? Gonna get that extra science from all the adjacent mountains. It's one thing to Field cannons! So I think our plan down here will be to take a city, upgrade all these to field cannons, and then raise the rest of the cities. How many more capitals do we need? Two, okay. So we need the Khmer. We need Khmer's capital. We need Saladin's capital. Have we still not met somebody? There's still somebody else we haven't met. Yeah, up here. I see them. I see them. With the great library complete, you can put a really good th a theater square next to Wonder, so we are going to do that. Our next kind of big military move is going to be at flight, I think. I also would like a military academy. I think we'll probably just head straight for flight, though. We're at a really big advantage here. Was barbarians taking out Geneva? Interesting. All right, let's get our great general in position for the most amount of uh, destruction. I apologize, Damietta. This is rather unfortunate for you. Awesome. So keeping this city is going to be next to impossible. But I think if we put a governor in here, I just need to keep this city to upgrade these crossbows, and then we'll raise these ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep it, what is it, seven turns? That's fine. It is 310 per. Maybe we're only going to be able to upgrade the one crossbow. Either way, I'm not going to lie, I don't think it really matters that much. The Venta is determined to be so freaking annoying. Get out of my empire! God, you're annoying. Let's uh, damage this crossbow. Another great general that we can't really use, except for with the field cannon. I'm actually going to teleport this guy over to Damietta. And he can be used with the field cannon. Art Museum feels pretty good right now, I think. That also means we can put a great writer in here. Flowers surround Drinking alone by moonlight. Favorite hobby. I know I make that joke every time, but it's, it's a good joke. <laughs> the Khmer got their settlers stolen by barbarians earlier. <laughs> oh, rough look. Rough look for my guy, Khmer. I think we have enough encampments now. I don't think we need to build another encampment in Patna. So I think heading intelligence agency is pretty good. If we're going to go intelligence agency here, we need to bring Victor over so that the spy gets a free promotion when it's finished. Yeah, field cannon is so ridiculous. <laughs> you just need one. You just need one field cannon. All right, yeah, Damascus will be done next turn. We'll raise Damascus. We'll raise Mecca. That way we'll have enough loyalty in this city to, to keep it. I'm also going to move Magnus down there to Damietta. It goes from minus 10 to minus 2. That'll hold it for a few more turns for us, so we have a chance to, to make it work. We can also hit Anchor Tom with this frigate. 
Which means if we just get a military unit here, we can come tank a take Anchor Tom, which is the capital. We can just buy or bring down one of these legions. But any military unit here can just zip across and take this city, which is awesome for us. Trading a lot with Wa Rapa Nui, a cultural city-state, so we'll vote for this. Production towards... Um, maybe encampment districts? City center and religious, it's fine. I, saw a bank. I don't have any leverage anyway. I kind of want to get rid of oligarchic legacy, but to be honest, I'm pretty... I'm, I'm digging it a little bit. I'm digging it a little bit. I think our setup is fine right now. Colonialism for the two envoys feels really good right now, so we can try and flip Laventa back. Gonna grab a monument in this city for a little bit of extra loyalty, just in case we can't be in a golden age forever. Although I think we'll win. We're already in a golden age next era, and I think we'll win in the next era, so I feel pretty good about that. Damascus is ours! And promptly raised by Damascus. Might as well take this promotion first. Grab Volley. Volley's fine. All right, these double frigates are going to take turns healing in our city over here while we take shots at Angkor Tom. Uh, if we swap them out every turn to take shots, then we can get this down in about two more turns. I'm going to kill the swordsman with the wall hit here. That way, this guy can start coming down. We want him to start coming down here 10 turns because we're going to want to take Anchor Tom right away. And you're going to move into the city to heal up. When you have multiple great generals, make sure you're actually checking the passive ability of the great general down in the bottom right to make sure it's covering the units that it actually affects. Because these affect units from different eras, so you want to make sure they're actually surrounding the correct um, units. I'm going to keep a unit in Damietta for a little bit, because having a unit in the city actually helps with loyalty. And I think we can take Mecha without this. Oh, it's turn 150! It is now turn 151. I went one turn over where I was supposed to go. That's my bad, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. As you can see with Domination, these last 50 turns, we went from being just up here in Ravenna. Um, we hadn't even settled Patoli. And in 50 turns, we came all the way down. We took Musket. We took out all of Hungary over here. We came across, we're starting to murder Mecha as well. So if you have a small, well-managed military, you guys can do a lot of damage in 50 turns. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know what you thought in the comments, or if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to finish this domination game off in the next one.